What happens? After this, after Babylon gets taken down, who rules after that? Us. We do. That's God's kingdom afterwards. Now, for a short interim period, you're going to have Gog and Magog that will rule for a short period. But ultimately, the, we are the ones that are ultimately ruling after the United States of America. Right? Because their, their rule, Gog and Magog, is a short and insignificant rulership. It's not a very long one that we see like the other nations are being described. You see that? So now that we've put all this together. <clears throat> I got a question for you. But before I ask it, I'm going to give all the praises, glory, and honor to Yahweh, Bashem, Yahushai, Bashem, Rechak, Wadash. Devil unto the elder apostles and bishops of the great millstone that rule well. Peace, blessings, and salutations unto the four elect tabernacle of David, scattered abroad throughout the four corners of the earth. So, my question to you is. How would there ever be any time at all that Russia or anyone for that matter would be able to rule during the dominion of Yahawashai when it begins? How would that even be possible? Even if it's short and significant. But you're basically insinuating that they're going to have some kind of authority or dominion on the earth when Yahweh Shai and the angels come back to invade and subdue. You understand what ha having rulership mean? It means you have total control and authority over other jurisdictions of people. At one point after the destruction of America, will Russia seem to have this authority and control over the, the earth when Yahweh Shai comes back and take down these nations? There's no rule. There's no dominion of any sort from any nation once Yahweh Shai returns. That's 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 over with. That's done. All right. Now, when you go to Revelation, all right, this is a Revelation 21. This is after America's destruction. This is after the elect uh got delivered. Um and the Lord, you know, he's gonna be then judged. The uh, the beast, all right. The beast, the whore, all right. And 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 that means what? That these other nations, they will no longer have it the way they had it before, where they had authority, where they had uh, jurisdiction, all right. Uh, when they had people that served them, that's not going to be a thing when we come back down. All right. This is Revelation twenty one. And one, and it says, and I saw a new heaven and a new earth. So right after the destruction, right after the judgment, there's going to be a new heaven and a new earth. You're implying that somehow uh, God is going to have a short, insignificant rule within this new heaven and new earth. Which is completely false. Because this is going to take place right after Esau is destroyed, right after a, a Babylon is wiped out, right after the the, uh, the beast gets took down, right after uh, all the armies, the war in heaven, Michael the archangel versus the dragon and his angels, uh, uh, the um, the multitude of, of all those uh, troops and armies that's going to be fighting. And the value of a uh, decision, the value of Jehoshaphat. This is what's going to precede that. It says, for the first heaven and first earth were passed away. And there was no more sea. Now, what came out of that sea? 
Because in the vision, he says there was no more sea. So what did that represent? What came up out of that sea? Before Yahweh Shai came and, 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 and took the earth, took, took the kingdom. Let's go to um, Devin, uh, Daniel 7 and 3. This is uh, Daniel 7 and um, I'll read 2. It says, Daniel spake and said, I saw in my vision by night and behold the four winds of the heaven strove upon the great sea. And four great beasts came up from the sea, diverse one from another. So you get to see that it was different dominions that came up out of that sea. And each uh, uh, nation, they were all given a duration of time to rule. Okay. And... Daniel gave the complete rundown of all those different empires from Babylon, inception of the Babylonian Empire, all the way to the last empire that will be ruling right when Yahweh returns, which is the Roman Empire. Uh, you had the first uh, uh, Roman Empire, all right, that fourth beast, and we know that it got wounded to death, but it was healed. And it, and it came back and resurfaced as a revitalized Roman Empire, Rome 2.0, which is where we're living at currently. And once that beast gets uh, dealt with, there's not going to be any reign of no other nation, not for a split second. Or else, unless you're saying that the, the Most High left out detail out of this uh, vision. So you're saying that the Lord left some things out of his vision. No, after after this last beast gets uh, 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 given to the burning flame, that's it. No, no muss. OK. Let's uh, let, let's 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 go down to. Uh. Verse 9 and uh, through 12, it says, I beheld till the thrones were cast down, right? Because that means what? That all these nations, they're going to be taken down. And, you know, the apostle and different brothers brought this out. This is what Apostle Paul was going into in his uh, epistle to the church of Corinth. He's going to come to subdue all his enemies. All right. So those Russians are, are his enemies as well. They, they're, those are Edomites. 1 Corinthians uh, 15 and 24, it says, Then cometh the end when he shall have delivered up the kingdom to the Most High, even the Father, when he shall have put down all rule and all authority and power. Okay? So all that, all dominion, all rulership, all authority is going to be put down when he, when he shows up, when they have that war. When he uh, was at Revelation 19, where it says that he's going to judge and make war. And he's going to, uh, 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 you know, stomp on that, that wine press. Let's go to uh, Revelation 19 and 11. And it says, and I saw heaven open and behold, a white horse. And he that sat on sat on him was called faithful and true. And in righteousness, he do of judge and make war. His eyes were as a flame of fire and his hair were were many crowns. Why? Because he's coming back to dethrone all these uh, nations of their rulership. And he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. And he was called, it's like, and he was clothed in a vesture dipped in blood. And his name is called the Word of the Most High. And the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses in the chariots, clothed in fine linen and white and clean. And out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword. That it should smite the nations. He's going to let out those uh, rays of light, those laser beams, and he's going to disintegrate all those armies over there. Okay? Because they're going to be over there in, 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 in that war, in the, in the war of um, Armageddon. And then it goes further into detail on that in 2nd second, second Ezra, the 13th chapter. 
you know, that 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 multitude that was gonna be afraid to fight, but they but they still fought. They durst fight. And the Lord turned them into a pack, <laughs> you know, smoking on uh, uh, the nation's army's pack. That's what he's going to come to do. He said all he perceived was 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 a a, a fire and in, and in, in, in the, in the smell of smoke. And Ezra, he was in fear when he saw that. So imagine an event like that happening. But yet, somehow, the Russians are going to still be intact and they're going to have authority, you know, for a certain period, for a little small period of time. Nah, man. That's not that's not how it's going down. When Yahweh Shai comes back, that's it. Because he's coming. He means business when he returns. All right. It says, <clears throat> and he shall rule him with a rod of iron. And he tread of the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of the almighty power. So that's why he's going to have all those uh, mini crowns because of what he's coming to do. Oh, let me get a quick pre. Let's go to Psalms 110. And it says, the Lord said unto my Lord, sit thou at my right hand until I make thine enemies thy footstool. The Lord shall send the rod of thy strength out of Zion. Rule thou in the midst of thine enemies. And that's what he's coming to subdue his, is his enemies. And we're going to be delivered from our enemies. Thy people shall be willing in the day of thy power and the beauties of holiness from the womb of the morning. Thou hast the dew of thy youth. The Lord have sworn and will not repent. Thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. It's talking about Yahweh Shai and the, the new priestly order that we're up under. All right. That's as kings and priests. The Lord at thy right hand shall strike through kings in the day of his wrath. Right? But he's just gonna but he's gonna leave uh Putin and, and, and those Russians. He's gonna leave them, and you know, they're gonna have a chance to be able to try to swarm on Jake. No, nah, man. See, they're gonna try to do that, you know, uh, as the destruction in America is, is happening. Cause you're gonna have uh, uh those, those uh Amalekites. That's over there. They're going to get destroyed. But you're going to have some of our people that's still on that side of the world and in those areas as well that the Lord's going to uh, deliver. There's going to be a small section of uh, uh, um, of, of, of um, those Russians. When you go into Ezekiel, all right, there was, was going to be a portion of them that was uh, left, left back because the rest of the army they're going to, they was going to be involved in his war. All right. And they're going to get, they're going to get smacked. All of these nations are going to get smacked. Because they're going to turn from fighting each other when Yahweh Shai comes back to try to fight him. And they're going to, and they're going to fail. All uh, uh, the Russians are going to be used for is to destroy Babylon and, uh, and, and their allies that, that have the, um, the arrow, the bow, the lance, the missiles. Okay. But on the other side of the world, Yahweh Shai is going to be getting busy in the, in the angels. And we're going to be delivered up out of here. And we're going to get this witness, the destruction. Plus, we're going to be uh, turned into battle acts and weapons of war. So we're going to get in on the action eventually because we got to go and subdue. We're going to gather these nations up. Especially the elite. But all their armies is going to get smoked. It says he shall judge among the heathen. He shall fill the places with the dead bodies. He shall wound the heads over many countries. So this is what the Lord is coming to do. So going back to uh, 1 Corinthians, it says, For he must reign till he have put all enemies under his feet. That's why he's going to go, he's going to make his rounds and, 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 and get all these uh, kings and rulers and, 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 and take them all out. out. All right. And they're going to be made uh, 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 subjects. They're going to be our servants. The ones that survive, they're going to go right into servitude. The, and you're going to have the elites that's going to be uh, uh, trying to hide. They're going to be hidden in those bunkers. 
We're going to gather them up and put them in chains. Psalms 149. It says the last enemy shall be destroyed as death, for he shall put all things under his feet. But when he shall, it's like it, but when he say of all things are put un, under him, it is manifest that he is expected, which he did put all things under him. And when all things shall be subdued unto him, then shall the son also himself be subject unto him that put all things under him, that the most high may be all in all. So there's no way that they're going to be under some type of authority or rule for any uh, uh, time for that matter. Okay. Yahweh is not going to give him a chance. Once he comes back, that's it. All right, so when we come back down, there ain't going to be no more sea. No more dominion from, from no nation. So going back, this is uh, Psalm 79. It says, I beheld till the thrones were cast down and the ancient of days did sit, whose garment was white as snow and the hair of his head like the pure wool and his throne like the fiery flame and his wheels as burning fire. A fiery stream issued and came forth from before him. Thousand thousands ministered unto him, the angels, and 10,000 times 10,000 stood before him. The judgment was set and the books were opened. And I, I beheld then because the voice of the great words, which the horn spake, all right, we spoke all those blasphemies and he was, you know, proud, right? I beheld even till the beast was slain and his body destroyed and given to the burning flame. That's when uh, uh, the Lord's going to um, cast him into that lake of fire. Okay. They're going to get destroyed. So there is no more uh, dominion after this. Esau is the end of the world and Jacob's the beginning that follows. That's why it's going to be a new heaven and a new earth after this happens. And it says, as concerning the rest of the beasts, all those other previous empires that ruled, they had their dominion taken away. They all got pre um, preceded. They all was um, like the Babylonians, for example. They ruled for a period of time. Then they were succeeded by uh, uh, the medial Persians. Then they got they ruled for a period of time. Then they were succeeded by uh, Alexander and the, the Greeks, the Greek Empire. Then they got succeeded by that that fourth beast that was uh, 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 different than the, all the other beasts. That was dreadful, diverse from all the other beasts. All right, and now we at the the uh, the foot of it. All right, which was the uh, the toes. You know, part uh, mire and part iron. And we know Yahweh Shai is going to destroy that. Going back to Daniel, the second chapter, that 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 stone. That's going to break those toes in pieces. That's Yahweh Shai that's representing Yahweh Shai coming back to take down this beast, destroy them. All right, it says, as the rest of the beast, you know, the, the Babylonians, uh, the medial Persians, the Greeks, they had their dominion taken away, yet their lives were prolonged for a season and time. All right? Because the nations are going to be here in the, in the kingdom, but they're just not going to rule. They're going to be able to you know, live in their own lands, but they're going to live up under our uh, uh, power, our authority. They're going to have to be governed under the law, statutes, and commandments of the Most High. Isaiah, the second chapter, tells you that the law is going to be enforced over the nations. And there ain't going to be any wars after that because all the weapons of war is going to be uh, 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 destroyed. And we're just going to uh, have, the, they're going to, it's going to be creation of uh, uh, agricultural tools and utensils so that they can actually uh, till the land and, and, and build the kingdom up. So I don't see how Russia fits into this unless the, you're saying that the Lord left out that intricate detail out of the prophecy. Otherwise, you're adding to the scriptures. Okay. 
So let's go to Daniel. Let's go to Daniel 2. And I'm going to read verse 44. And it says, Daniel 2 and 44, it says, And in the days of these kings shall the, shall the Most High God of heaven set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed, and the kingdom shall never be left to other people. Hassad is basically saying, well, it's going to be left to the Medes. It's going to be left to Gog for a short, insignificant period. But the Most High just happened to leave that out. You know, the Lord kind of just left that out, but he he revealed it to us here. You know, because the, the first person I heard break that down like that was uh, the deacon. So. That showing you right there, man. These dudes, they, they really don't have it. The scripture said the kingdom is not going to be left to other people. So nobody's going to be ruling nowhere at no moment for no uh, significant amount of time. Our kingdom will not be succeeded. Because it's going gonna, it's, it's gonna to be an everlasting dominion. All right, it says, but it shall break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms and it shall stand forever. All right, so... If you're saying that uh, Gog and Magog is going to be ruling for a certain period of time, you know, for five minutes or two days or whatever, then you're saying that the kingdom is going to be left to, to, to another people for those five minutes or for uh, 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 the two days or whatever, man. But that's not what the scripture is saying here. So Russia is not going to have no rule. If they have a remnant of uh, of an army that, that that think that they're gonna try to come and do something to Israel, that don't mean that they uh, uh, are in rulership. That don't mean anything. So <clears throat> you you gonna have to uh, you know explain this, man. You gonna have to explain it. All right. You, and, and you should really uh, humble down and repent because the, the apostles and, and elders, you know, they, they, they're, they're not going to just intentionally just mislead, mislead you. All right. The spirit is on them. We have the understanding. So that, that was pretty much all I got in the uh, Lord willing. This was edifying. Let me give all praise to y'all. Bashim Yashai. Until the next one. Shalom.